When I was about 17, I worked at a dry cleaners. I quickly got used to the regulars and would begin to fill out their dry cleaning billet with their name and phone number, just as they were approaching the glass door that led into the store from the Little Plaza's parking lot. One such customer was Mr. Lake. He was a calm and quiet man who wore business suits and collared shirts that we would dry clean and press into crisp perfection. He was probably about 40, but from my then 17-year-old perspective, he was old. Before I tagged and put clothes into the large laundry carts behind the wall, I'd check the pockets. If anything was found, our job was to put the item into an envelope with the customer's name to return to them when they arrived to pick up their dry cleaning. Many small treasures were found and returned to grateful customers. On one particular day, rifling through Mr. Lake's suit pockets revealed a special treasure. A piece of lined paper unfolded to his handwritten poem. I guiltily read it, and I loved it so much. I even more guiltily kept it. I now don't remember much of the words, but I do remember it being saturated with a sense of responsibility and burden. One line etched itself into my memory. While you go on talking of taxes and tension. I'm not sure I felt or understood the full velocity of those words then, but I certainly understand and feel them now. There are people I know who are strongly focused on the temporal. I understand it. I was one of those people years ago. I too was a person who was excessively concerned with the state of the economy, politics and justice. I too talked a lot about taxes and tension. Though I haven't fully abandoned my former concerns, I still care about the state of our world but I am not absorbed by it. Being absorbed by it creates a sense of burden, the weight of which I have felt and Mr. Lake did too before me. But it doesn't have to be this way. For me, that experience of discovering Mr. Lake's poem was a seed that taught me to find the joy within myself under any circumstances. This YouTube account speaks solely of the simple joys and the beauty of life that is all around us. Sometimes making these videos or tweeting about joy feels superficial and uncaring of a world that seems to teeter on the brink of annihilation moving at an untenable pace on a stationary seesaw. Yet at other times, my focus on joy feels like a rising above the fray, above the temporary problems and constant dualities that plague our modern world. Joy is a higher vibration that can only be felt when the mind, body and soul are at peace and you have to practice it to feel it. It is already inside you, waiting to be explored. Achieving this vibration under the constraints of our lives and daily distractions takes effort. It's like a tug of war between two forces, one that wants to keep you stuck in a swirl of mindlessness that has little value in the big picture.
the other lets you fly free. Soaring against the sky, wind at your back, reaching higher into colors that are indefinable. Such is the vibration of joy. Left in the quiet, your heart floats gently and blossoms like the soft pink petals of an unfolding flower. The taxes and tension slipping away into meaningless atoms that dissolve into the ether because there is no energy to propel them forward. Whatever you nourish by giving your energy to will grow in profundity. giving my energy over to joyful moments. Will you do the same? Even if just for a few minutes of every day. A good place to start is by literally focusing all your thoughts on something joyful every day for just a few minutes. Starting with something small in nature like a single wildflower, the colors of the sky at sunrise, an unfurling leaf in spring, the scent of freshly cut grass, simple little things that will absolutely bring you joy and will refocus your attention toward higher vibrations. I've also created a short joy journal that will give you an idea of how to begin focusing on joy. You can download the free PDF from the link in the description and let me know if it helps you in any way. I do hope it allows you to see the joy inside you that is ready and waiting to be explored. The question is, are you ready to let go and feel the joy? I left that job a few months later. Actually, I got fired. Not for stealing his poem, but you know, teenage angst. But I do hope that eventually, Mr. Lake broke down the barriers and was able to fly free into joy. Until next time, I wish you a beautiful, joy-filled day. Thank you so much for being here.